Welcome to Maker Business Profiles, where we take a look at the more professional side of making. Today, we get to take a tour of a small company in Portland, Oregon that makes bags. Yeah, so we're North Street Bags. We're based out of uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, we make bags. Uh, we make backpacks, uh, panniers, hip bags, duffels, totes, all kind of bags. Um, we started in the bike space, so I started the company about 10 years ago um, out of my basement uh, when I right when I moved here to Portland. Um, I was looking for a bag that I could wear as a backpack and um, and then mount it to my bike as a pannier. And there were you know a few bags out there that um, did that, but I wasn't too keen on them, so I set off to make my own. And after a few iterations, my friends started wanting them, and then like I made the move up here to Portland and started the website and started making them. Um, and it's been a journey ever since then to where we are now. So your, ba um, your bags now, do they work as a pannier as well? We Yeah, that's still our flagship uh, product is the backpack pannier. We have two models, um, and we still sell the original, kind of the original design, um, the Woodward, which you'll see on the site. And um, we make everything in house, so we we can show you around. But it's um, cut; everything is cut and sewn in house by our team of production folks. Um, all you know, our neighbors here in Portland, Rad Portlanders, making stuff here in Portland. Um, That's awesome. And, well, before we go further, though, what's a pannier? A pannier? Oh, sorry. It's, That's um, all right. So if you have a, a rack on your bike, like uh -huh. on the back of your bike, it's a bag that'll connect to that, so you can mount a bag to your bike when you're riding so that you don't have to carry it on your back. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> I didn't want to go through the whole interview thinking of the wrong right. thing. <laughs> All I right. forget so I don't really know what that is. <laughs> so is this like your is this your full time gig now? I mean are you guys like just all in on this? Yeah. And... Been full time with it for since I started ten years ago. And we've got um, seven others on the team, most of whom are full time. Um, yeah, and it's really fun to like uh, get to work with other cool folks, and everyone's super passionate about just making quality gear and putting stuff out there. We do a lot of custom stuff, which you'll see, and uh, yeah, it's super fun. So before we start talking about about the business and uh, and actually making stuff, where could somebody find you guys online? So we are at um, NorthStreetBags.com. Uh, that's where you'll find all of our gear. Uh, we do custom orders through there as well. Um, and then we do sell to shops. We're in about um, 60 or 70 bike shops here in the US. Um, and then a few other kind of outdoor stores here in Portland, uh, Next Adventure, Boys Fort. Um, we also have distribution in Japan. So we've got shops in Japan that are set up with our gear, which is really fun too. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. So uh, let's hop into the bag itself. Um, yeah. Tell me about your bag. Like what? Um, what makes it special? What makes it cool? Other than being a panny <laughs> pannier, pannier, how do you say it? Yeah. So that was kind of the initial, um, you know, uh, unique piece to it was that it converted from a back back and forth, uh -huh. uh, uh, and so it was very sought after for bike commuters. Um, I used a bike to get around a lot, which is why I was looking for that bag, and a lot of other people encountered the same problem because, you know, a lot of people bike in Portland and are looking for a bag that does the same thing, so we kind of hit that spot in the market where we um, got, got our name out there for, for being able to offer that kind of product, um, and then since then, We've been op opening it up to trying to um, have other lifestyle products. So we do a lot of backpacks, we do tote bags, we do duffels, we do more travel gear. So that whatever whatever it is you're trying to do, you know, if you're flying out somewhere for a few days or going camping or just going to the beach for a picnic, like we've got a bag for that, and it's not just you know because I find that like I I don't call myself a cyclist, but I ride a bike to get around. But I do all this other stuff in my life that I also need other kinds of gear for. So that's that's what we're trying to cater to is like just whatever you need, we've got you covered bag wise. So perfect, perfect. Um, you know, I've I've got a bunch of questions about like the business and and growth and how you know how you've gotten to where you are. But if you want to show us around a bit, I'd love to see yep. like people making stuff. So we'll start here. 
So this is our, um, actually our little showroom we have. We we do sell bags out of the store here. Okay. Uh, um, so that you can see some of the fun prints that we do. Um, so we make these like screen printed patterns that we have available on our custom pickers. And so you can see we got a couple of different colors there available. These are all uh, backpacks that we're looking at right now. Um, and just to give you a quick, this is a, what a rear rack is for your bike. So we've got um, bags that'll kind of connect like so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's kind of the form factor that we're most experienced with. But then, yeah, like I said, we got a lot of other um, packs as well. So we do some hip packs and things like that. Nice. This reading okay? Can you see everything? Yeah, everything's coming through great. Right. <laughs> um, and so then now we're looking back into the shop, past the counter, and you can see stuff, people making stuff in the back here. Nice. We'll just kind of move through. So here's our all of our fabric. Um, we basically just have one roll of each color at a time. We use um, 1000D Cordura for a lot of stuff. Um, it's really durable. It's made in USA. Um, it's water resistant. And and then for the lining material on a lot of the bags, we use this um, X-Pack. So it has this like diamond pattern to it. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a waterproof fabric. So we're able to add a waterproof layer to the bags, a lot of the bags. And stepping around the way here, this is our cutting department over here. There's our cutting table. Everything's cut out right here. We cut bags one at a time. And then actually we also have a laser cutter as we move back. So it's not running right now, but um, we're able to cut very efficiently on this machine it automates the cut, and um, it's it's about twice as fast as a person cutting a bag out. Yeah. So it's, it's added a lot to our efficiency. Um, and we'll load up these uh, lunch trays with bag with all the parts you need for the bag. And then um, here's Brittany cutting out trims. So she's actually um, using our hot knife to cut out webbing and different parts and clipping them to the trays. Um, so all the cord and webbing and Velcro parts, um, zippers and stuff are on this station. <laughs> um, got all the patterns here. So if we need to mark something out and cut it, we can. And then we move straight into the sewing department, which is over here. So you can kind of see we got about a, about 10 machines on the line right now. Um, most of them we use every day. Um, some of them are really task specific. So like um, this machine here, all it does is put on the binding, like edge binding. So it takes this tape and folds it um, on this foot here. Yeah, I see. And uh, it can just clean up an edge really fast. Um, and then some of the machines are more general just to use for assembly and whatnot. And here you can see we've got like a bunch of bags going through waiting for waiting for the next step in sewing. So like each tray has a bag on it with all the parts. Um, and we try and do things kind of one at a time. And uh, once a bag is finished, here we've got one coming together over here. <clears throat> So just one, you know, one, our hands to yours, right? One at a time. It's, we don't warehouse anything. If you order a bag, someone's like picking the colors off the shelf, cut them out. We'll sew it together and ship it out, you know. And once we start the process, once we start cutting out the bag, it usually takes about a day, maybe a little less to, for the bag to ship out. Very nice. So it all happens pretty fast. We don't have a lot going at once. We don't have too many bags running at once because we try and finish out the ones we start. Um, and then moving over here, we've got our shipping department where everything gets shipped out. 
back out the door. So this is Leia. She's our latest, our newest team member. Um, <laughs> Hi. And yeah, was there anything more you wanted to see? No, that's fantastic. That's a great tour and really lets me get a feel for kind of your scale and what you guys are doing. I've got some more questions for you, though, if you want to get comfortable yeah. and, and I'll ask you some more questions. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really fun to show people around and like, I love having, you know, we have customers who come in to like check out colors and whatnot and it's cool that we have the production space right there and we're pretty transparent about it and, you know, you get to meet the people that are actually making the bags. So that's always a really fun interaction. That's very <laughs> cool. So you mentioned that you do custom stuff. What do yeah. you mean by custom? So we have a a lot of different colors on the website um, that are available to pick. Um, and a lot of bags will have kind of two different elements that you can pick out a specific color for each one. And we don't, um, some of the, some of the colors are just kind of standard colors. Like we'll run all black in pretty much everything we make because we know that's going to sell. But if you want to get wild and pick out some bright yellow or neon green or hot pink, we've got that too. Um, and that's a way to kind of personalize your bag and make it yours, uh, make it more unique. Um, and that's one thing, really fun thing about the print selection as well is that like we can put up a limited print where we actually get our fabric printed, screen printed here in Portland. And that's another option to kind of add for the custom bags is, is a fun, adding a fun pattern to it. That's cool. And then you're selling these in stores as well. And you mentioned something about Japan. Yeah, so we sell them. Um, we're, we're in about 60 to 70 stores here in the U.S. Most of them are independent bike shops because that's kind of our core business is the bike, uh, the bike stuff. Uh, but here in Portland, we're also in Next Adventure. Uh, we're in a store called Made Here. Uh, we're in a store called Boys Fort. Um, and... Um, and then in Japan, we've actually got two distributors. So one who is selling to mostly bike shops. So we're in a bunch of bike shops in Japan. And then another one who's selling to more lifestyle focused and like outdoor focused stores. Um, so we've got a number of stores uh, that were also in Japan, which is really exciting. Do you have to do anything different or special to your, to your bags that are going overseas? Not really. We have a couple of styles that we do just for them. Uh, they have a couple of bags that um, are really popular over there that we haven't quite found the market for here yet. But um, so we'll do a couple of unique styles for them. But um, for just the most part, different for, tastes. Uh, yeah, they're looking for kind of the classic, you know, North Street gear that we make. So oh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. So uh, let's talk a little bit about like how you got to here you started by making a bag yeah now you have like a, a full business shipping around the world with employees yep. like did you did you go the route of getting like business funding or or how did you make that leap yeah um we haven't actually needed a whole lot of funding um, over the years. So we're, we practice lean manufacturing, which is kind of a, a culture and a mindset, but there's also some very practical tools that come with it. It's, it's, um, it was pioneered by the Toyota company in Japan, um, basically looking for ways to reduce waste in your process so that you can stay focused on what your customer cares about, right? And I always say, like, if you're waiting in line for a cup of coffee, you don't want to wait longer because they're making coffee for the 10 people behind you, right? Yeah. Like, that's not how you add to you. You want your coffee as soon as as soon as it's ready. Um, but you might wait longer if the coffee was more delicious or had more, you know, better service coming along with it. So we identify those things that are of value and everything else we try and eliminate. So that's why we build bags one at a time, because what it does is it actually reveals the steps in the process that are not of value to the customer. Um, simple things like if we position this machine closer to this station over here, then it's less of a distance for us to travel in between each step. And we, you know, we can cut out a few seconds out of the process that way. That makes and sense. So, 
we've been able to grow steadily um, without the need for a lot of funding, uh, which is great um, because you know funding comes with interest and all that. So um, I've had a little bit here and there over the years, but um, yeah, largely it's just kind of shoestring and DIY, and we got to get it done however we can. <laughs> Interesting. Have you had any? Yeah. Have you had any like? Uh attempts to do something a certain way that just really did not pan out. I, I hesitate to use the term failure because of the, you know, people consider that as an end stop, but when yeah. you're making stuff, you know, sometimes it's like, well, that yeah. didn't work and you just moved on to something yeah. else, but it makes a oh, good yeah. story. Every day. Yeah. So, oh yeah. All the time. Um, yeah. And we don't really see them as failures either. We see them as opportunities to learn. Right. Yeah. So anytime you try something, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. It might work out. Either way, you're going to learn from it and maybe adjust how you do things in the future based on what you learn. So as long as we're constantly le learning from what we're trying, like that's what I'm going for. And we've been able to build a production line that's really efficient using that kind of ethos and taking a really scientific approach to it as well, where we'll like actually measure the data and measure how long it takes to do things, even really simple, like silly things. Um, but we found that it really does kind of pay off in the long run to, to focus on that, those extra few steps that it takes, like, how can we eliminate that? And then that's going to, you know, from that moment forward that you make that improvement, you're not going to be spending that extra time as short as it might be. So yeah, we, we definitely, you know, we we try things, we try things every week and some of them work out and some of them don't, but we constantly try and improve and learn from, learn from our experiments. Is there anything that you do that's kind of inefficient, but you're not willing to give up? <laughs> um, most of our stuff is pretty efficient nowadays. Uh, we're pretty quick to identify things that are not. We have a couple of uh, materials that we have to buy in bulk, and that's just because of vendor minimums and things like that. And so there's a couple of barriers like, oh, well, if we had like a you know, these tools like a table saw and some extra, you know, cutting tools, we might be able to cut those, make those parts in house and we wouldn't have to buy as many from our vendor and all this. So there's things like that that are kind of, we know we want to fix eventually, but um, we kind of, you know, take, uh, uh, do what we can, you know. Yeah. We, <laughs> is there, we all on all at once, that's for sure. Along those lines, is there like, um, like a tool you'd really love to put into your process that, that either you don't have the funds for now or like a, or the re yeah. you know, excuse or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'd love to get another automated cutter. So either a second laser or a CNC router, like rotary blade cutter that would automate our cutting even further. Yeah. Um, I can see that. Or, yeah. If, we, if I had the funding, great. Um, but um, it doesn't quite make sense yet to start that process just because we don't quite need it and we've been running pretty well with the one laser that we have. So Nice. How much do your bags retail for? I mean, I saw you had a lot of products. Let's not go through all yeah. of them. Let's say like your most, how much does your most popular product retail for? So our flagship bag, which I mentioned, the backpack paneer, the Woodward backpack paneer, uh, retails for two fifty. We're actually raising the price in a in a couple of weeks uh, by about fifteen bucks. So um, this might be out of date by the time it goes up. So be, I think it's going up to two seventy retail. Um, we have a a waterproof day pack called the Davis, which is one hundred and fifteen retail. That's a real our most popular backpack that we sell. Um, then we do a range of hip packs um, and other accessories. The hip packs start at 40 bucks and go up. And um, so, yeah, we try and stay, you know, we, we do charge a bit of a premium because we're like, you know, we pay fair wages here in Portland and that, that comes with its costs, right? Yeah. But we try to stay competitive where we're not the most expensive uh, version of anything out there and, and um, try and stay competitive to other, other companies as well. How about uh, waste? Yeah. Do you guys have any special operations around waste? We, we try and um, cut down on our material waste as much as possible. And actually the laser cutter has helped out a lot with that where we can, uh, we made a lot of improvements to our nesting so that when, after you cut out the bag, whatever the remnant that's left over is much, much smaller than, um, than it used to be. And um, so that's helped to reduce, you know, the stuff that we send to the landfill from our cutting floor. 
Um, and then we, for all of our shipping materials, we try and use post-consumer recycled materials. We have a, a mailer that we mail out. Most of our bag shipments go out on this like poly mailer that's actually compostable. You can reuse it and then compost it, which is kind of cool. Um, so things like that, like the little things that, like we have a, a label, a shipping label where you can recycle the back, you know, that like filmy backing that comes on labels. Like we have one now that you can recycle, curbside recycle the, the backing, uh, which before we had to put that in the landfill and that, that didn't feel good. So we've been able to make little changes like that to help reduce our, our impact. Um, Very nice. Well, um, how about this? Do you have any advice for somebody who's like, they've got kind of a product they're starting, kind of like in the beginning when you had a bag that like, you've had a few friends that are like, man, that is cool. I would love yeah. to to have one of those. Do you have any advice yeah. for somebody on like maybe the next little steps to maybe kind of get it off the ground? Yeah, I would say... Don't be afraid to try things and don't be afraid to fail, as we talked about, as long as you're learning. Um, no experience is going to be wasted or actually, you know, a true failure. Um, the other thing I would say is like, so I started on the product side and I had the bag that I wanted to develop and then sell, um, but I knew very little about business. And I, I went through several different kind of business rounds of business classes. Um, they're through the uh, Portland Community College here in where I'm from. There's like uh, basically a cohort of small business owners and entrepreneurs who learn about, you know, accounting and marketing and all the different things that you need to run a business. And you do need those things. It, just having a great product is a great start. And there's a lot of other hurdles to, to get to the point where it's a sustainable business. And so um, that, that is, is not something you want to neglect, uh, I would say. Yeah. All right. That's wonderful. Okay, man. That's, uh, that's all the questions I've got for you today. Okay. Thank you so much for yeah. hanging out and showing us around. Your shop looks great. And uh, we'll see you online. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. And um, yeah, happy writing. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I know every time I watch these videos, I kind of fantasize about starting my own company and each time I learn a little bit more and a little bit more and oh, it would be impossible to start all the companies that I have in my mind. So I'll just have to live with ordering some of their cool products. If you wanna find out more information about their bags, you can find a link in the description below. Also, in the comments below, let us know what companies you think we should call up and get tours of. Anybody you're curious about or that you know, maybe a friend of yours, maybe you have a small maker business and you want to talk to us. Leave a comment below to let us know. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you can get an email whenever a new video comes out.